Hi there, it's Thomas, and this is Donkey Kong 64. It's the first 3D Donkey Kong game, and it was developed by these Brits here, Rare. But something these guys added to the game shocked Nintendo. A real shotgun. Here's how Nintendo reacted. This is Rare, one of the UK's most esteemed developers back in the 90s. After releasing the critically acclaimed Donkey Kong Country games, the studio was ready for their next Donkey Kong adventure. By now, they'd already got their hands on Nintendo's exciting new console, the N64. This new system was built for 3D, and so Rare knew their new Donkey Kong game would have to take full advantage of this extra dimension. The game would feature a fully realised world with height and depth for the player to explore, and more importantly, for the player to find collectibles inside. And as Rare's plans began to take shape, the company's developers grew steadily more excited. They were ready to show the world what a 3D Donkey Kong game would look like. Now, during the course of the game's development, many ideas were added into the game, some just simple placeholders, and one of these ideas was the addition of guns. Donkey Kong was given a shotgun, and Diddy was given two pistols. And these guns weren't cartoon-like either. George Andreas, the game's creative director, explains, It wasn't a textured gun that you might expect, but a realistic shotgun with bullets flying out and with horrifying sound effects. And the developers at Rare were very aware that these guns didn't exactly fit into the world of Donkey Kong, but they were just a placeholder, so it seemed fine for now. At least for the time being, the guns were in. By 1998, Donkey Kong 64's development had come a long way. The game world was now chock-a-block with things to collect, and the game's iconic DK rap had been written, recorded, and programmed in. And later that year, Nintendo were actually planning a visit to Rare's headquarters in the UK. There was Howard Lincoln, the head of Nintendo's American branch, along with soon-to-be president Satoru Iwata, and most importantly, the original creator of Donkey Kong, Shigeru Miyamoto. All three had come to the UK just to visit Rare, to check on the progress of Donkey Kong 64. Rare knew how important this visit was. If Shigeru Miyamoto didn't like the game, he could have it shut down then and there. It was vital that the visitors liked the new game. Later that day, Lincoln, Iwata, and Miyamoto arrived at Rare's offices and filed in through the door. Miyamoto was excited to see what exactly Rare's plans for the next Donkey Kong adventure were. He was offered a seat alongside Rare's creative director, George Andreas, where he would be shown a demonstration of the game's progress thus far. George booted up the game, and out the speakers blared the DK rap. Miyamoto seemed intrigued. Quickly, George entered into the game itself and started running around the world as Donkey Kong. He swung from vine to vine, grabbing all the bananas he could along the way. And when he looked over to Miyamoto, Andreas noticed the designer starting to smile. <laughs> Alright, it seemed to be going well. All George Andreas had to do now was not screw it up, not do anything to put Miyamoto off the game. He ran around a little more, showing off all the buttons on the controller and what they did. This button made you jump, Andreas showed Donkey Kong jumping around. Oh, and this button pulled out your gun. Andreas showed off how you could shoot the beavers in the background, and it made this really realistic noise, actually. He glanced over at Miyamoto. Miyamoto was horrified. Oh, bananas. It was then Andreas realised what he'd just shown Miyamoto. The realistic guns, the horrifying sound effects. Everyone at Rare had become so used to seeing these guns in action that they barely batted an eyelid when they saw them now. They blended into the background almost. But for Miyamoto, they certainly did not blend into the background. This was a shock, a horror even. Here was Donkey Kong. Here's Donkey Kong, running around, carrying a shotgun and shooting beavers. His face said it all. Andreas, meanwhile, could feel his heart beating louder and louder. What was Miyamoto going to say? What would he do? Was he about to cancel the game? Instead, Miyamoto reached over to a notepad, grabbed a pencil, and started to sketch. 
He smiled, and Andreas could feel his heart returning to its normal rhythm. After a minute or so, Miyamoto spun the notepad around to reveal what he'd been drawing. It was the design for a new weapon, one that was far less brutal, a coconut launcher. Whew. It seemed as though Miyamoto wasn't too bothered about the gun after all. He was simply offering a replacement for Rare to use. This new gun would instead launch coconuts into enemies, and I mean, just look at it, it seems so perfect for the world of Donkey Kong. All George Andreas could reply was, oh yeah, that's cool, <laughs> we'll put that in. And sure enough, when Donkey Kong 64 was released the next year, the coconut launcher came along with it. There were, however, a couple of screenshots that showed off these realistic shotguns in action. And while I concur that the coconut launcher does indeed make for a much better fit with the world of Donkey Kong, the anarchist in me can't help but wonder what could have been. <laughs>